Have you ever felt like a fraud? (laughs) Trust me, you're not alone. Imposter syndrome is real and it's plaguing our society. In this edition of Thursday's Thought, you'll learn the truth about imposter syndrome, why we experience it, and three tips to battle it so you can show up and be who you're here to fucking be. Today's episode is sponsored by my advanced digital training, Unleashed and Unapologetic, How to Become a Thought Leader and Create a Cult following. If you're ready to gain visibility, build a loyal following, and create impact while increasing your income, enroll for the UNU training at rubyframon.com forward slash unleashed. Whether you're new to this podcast or you are a loyal thought leader, please, please make sure you take a moment to drop a rating and review on iTunes. This shit helps and I would appreciate you so much. Now it is time to dive into this edition of Thursday's Thought and battle the imposter within. Hey, thought leaders, welcome to another edition of Thursday's Thought. And today I want to talk about the battle with imposter syndrome. Now we've all heard about imposter syndrome and many of us are probably dealing with it. Um... So today I really want to focus on what it is, why we experience it, and some tools that I've found to help battle imposter syndrome so you can continue to show up, do what you're here to fucking do, and create the impact that you're here to create. Now from my work with my clients, whether it's through one-on-one work, my group programs, or the Unleashed and Unapologetic digital training, I have found that like 99.9%, if not all of them, have dealt with some degree of imposter syndrome. As purpose-driven entrepreneurs, we are now showing up in an era where digital marketing has taken over, meaning social media is available at everyone's fingertips. They can see what we're doing at any point in time. We can put ourselves out there at any point in time which creates this, um, it's this weird like sense of urgency, like I need to put myself out there and this sense of control, like I need to control how I'm being seen out there. And so we're constantly battling ourselves, right? We're not battling our audiences. We're not battling um, who we're here to serve. We're battling ourselves to position ourselves in a certain way. and it becomes really tough. Like I think the biggest roadblock that we can throw at ourselves is this notion of imposter syndrome, is this sense of feeling like an imposter, feeling like you're a fraud. I mean, if you have a purpose, if you have a mission, that means you have a gift and you're here to share your gifts with the world, right? And that's how you create impact. But if you're feeling like an imposter, while you're sharing those gifts, then that defeats the whole fucking purpose, right? And yet here we have an entire population of purpose-driven entrepreneurs and leaders who are battling with imposter syndrome. So let's talk about what imposter imposter syndrome really is. Um, So if we talk about the psychology of it, it's a psychological pattern in which an individual doubts their accomplishments and has a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. Okay. Um, So think about that. They have this persistent internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. And maybe you've experienced it and I'll make it real. Um, You post something, you share a post, Uh, better yet, you share a Facebook live. And as you're recording the live, you see more and more people joining. And then there's this little part of you in the back of your mind that's like, oh, like, I hope that they see how professional I am, or I hope that they see um, that I really know my shit. I hope they don't call me out on my shit. Uh, This is you with this internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud, right? Um, another way that this can manifest is like, you believe that any of your accomplishments are, are due to luck or because you've deceived others to perceive you as more than you really are, to perceive you as an expert, you've duped people. 
Now, this is really common in people who have the pattern of imposter syndrome. If you have the pattern, pattern of imposter syndrome, then you'll most likely tend to believe that your accomplishments are due to luck. Like you'll actually say, oh, I just got lucky and that's why I got this accomplishment. Or, oh, I deceived people into thinking that I'm an expert. This is why I was able to enroll people into this program and I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, <clears throat> so that's another um, behavioral aspect of imposter syndrome. And then there's another one where it's like, you don't feel like you actually deserve your accomplishments or your success. This is part of imposter syndrome. If you have imposter syndrome, then there is also a part of you that believes that you don't deserve the success that's coming your way. And so when you achieve something, when you win something, when you achieve something, when you get featured in something, when you sell out a program, you're going to feel as though it, it, you just weren't worthy of that, that you didn't deserve that. And then somehow you're going to self-sabotage the next thing. This is part of imposter syndrome. And I see this over and over and over again in all of my clients. It's one of the shared traits that they all fucking have. And I, I'm going to guess that all of my listeners probably share this too. Um, but it's something that has really plagued our society because we are taught from a very young age to do things a certain way, to be a certain way, to fit a certain mold in order to be accepted, right? To achieve the degree in order to be seen as an expert in XYZ. Like we need to go to school, we need to get the degree, then we need to get the master's degree because the master's degree is going to tell people that we're even more capable of doing the thing that we're here to do. And so we've been molded into this society that believes that in order to be seen as an expert, we need to have this external thing of X, Y, and Z. It's not something that is innately an innate gift. And so we carry on this feeling of being an imposter into our businesses. And I'm telling you, this is going to bleed into everything that you do. And it's going to have a negative impact on your clients, on your marketing, on your messaging, because there is a part of you that doesn't believe what it is that you're saying. Because if you, if you suffer from imposter syndrome, that means that you have a deep innate fear of people seeing you as a fraud, which means there's a part of you that sees yourself as a fraud. Do you hear what I'm saying? And that part of you that sees yourself as a fraud, that energy, that vibration of that feeling is going to leak into everything that you do. Okay. So you're only making this worse. You're only amplifying the, the, the feeling of being a fraud. And that is something that people are going to pick up on when they watch your shit, when they read your content, they're going to pick up on this. So why why do we experience imposter syndrome? Like, why do we actually experience this pattern? Um, well, I think the number one reason is we're stepping outside our com comfort zone. So for so long, you've been living in your comfort zone, doing things a certain way. And then lo and behold, you become this purpose-driven leader and now you're on your own and now you're carving your own path. And now um, you're blazing your own trail, which means you're stepping outside of your comfort zone, doing things in a different way, um, using your gifts in a different way, something that you've never done before and you're questioning yourself and you're scared that people are, are going to doubt you or see you as a fraud, but essentially that's coming from within. Another reason why we experience this is just self-doubt. I mean, you doubt your, your abilities to, to do what you're here to do. You doubt your gifts. You know, um, there's been so many of my clients that come to me and they have this real fucking amazing gift, but they're doubting themselves because they haven't let themselves step fully into that gift. And that, that self doubt bleeds into imposter syndrome, because if you're doubting yourself, then there is also a part of you that believes that other people are going to doubt you, AKA see you as a fraud. Um, this also means that, you know, um, that another reason why we experience this is we're not confident in our in our gifts or ourselves. So you're not confident in who you are. You're not confident in your gifts. You're not confident in your messaging. And this is why you're going to experience imposter syndrome. Um, another thing is, is you put a lot of pressure on yourself to succeed, right? Most entrepreneurs and purpose-driven um, 
leaders or heart-centered leaders, we are high achievers. We put a lot of fucking pressure on ourselves and that pressure can become this whole other beast that evokes this feeling of, of being seen as an imposter. Because if you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself, then you're probably trying to overcompensate for something. And when you're overcompensating for something, you're not going to show up as your true authentic self. And so you're manipulating your image. And in that you're constantly going to be worrying about, well, I hope people see me as this person that I'm trying to be seen as and not a fraud. Um, Another real reason why we experience imposter syndrome is the fear of failure. We're so scared of failing, right? So you're scared of failing, which means you're going to be careful, like extra careful about everything that you're putting out there. And you're extra careful about your image and you're extra careful about the words that you're throwing out there. And you're extra, extra scared that people are going to see you as an imposter. Because if they see you as an imposter, if they call you out as a fraud, then you're going to fail, right? So all of this perpetuates the imposter syndrome, all of it feeds into imposter syndrome. And then there's this other reason why we experience it. Maybe you just don't feel worthy of success, right? So imposter syndrome is your way of, of um, self-sabotaging any chance you have at creating success. So before we go any further, I want you to know that you are not alone in this. Um, I fully fucking admit that I still suffer from imposter syndrome. And there are so many times, like, I can't tell you right now as I'm recording how many times like thoughts have gone through my head as I'm recording this, uh, is this content going to be good enough? Are they going to actually believe me when I say this? Are they going to see me as an expert? Blah, blah, blah. Like I'm telling you this because I want you to know that this is something that so many of us feel, if not all of us, because we are so connected, like so deeply connected to our purpose and to our mission that we don't want to fuck it up. And we don't want people to see us as a fraud because that would mean that our entire purpose is a fraud. And if I'm being super honest, I'm just going to fucking say it. We're all kind of frauds, right? Like who's really an expert at anything? Who's an expert at anything? Because everything is always evolving. You've heard me say this before. Everything is constantly shifting. Everything is constantly evolving. There's always more to learn. So we're never really at that point of being expert. Maybe you're an expert in this moment, but the next moment you're not. So we're all constantly just learning and evolving and becoming our best selves. And that's all this is, right? You just need to worry about your purpose and what you're here to do and how you want to impact those you're here to serve. Like, what is it that you really want to help people with? Focus on, on supporting them with that and leave out all the rest. Most people who experience imposter syndrome will also experience anxiety, depression, or elevated levels of stress because of the self-talk that accompanies it, right? So just like I just shared with you as I've been recording this episode and, and any episode, to be honest, um, you know, I have these thoughts that go in my head, like, is this good enough? Are they going to really see me as an expert? Are they going to want to subscribe? Blah, blah, blah. And this self-talk is exhausting. And this is what stresses us out. You know, like so many entrepreneurs feel depleted and drained. And yes, it could be a due to external sources for sure. Maybe you're not taking care of your health. Maybe you're not taking care of yourself and um, maybe you have too much on your plate. And a major underlying cause is this self-talk, which accompanies imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome triggers your inner critic to speak up, to act up. And here's the, the thing is we'll usually respond to our inner critic in one of two ways, right? The first way is to overwork ourselves to get the job done. We'll overcompensate. And the second way is to procrastinate. <laughs> so we just don't do anything at all. And maybe you've experienced, maybe you lean more towards overcompensation versus procrastination or vice versa. Or maybe you do a blend of both. I usually do a blend of both. <laughs> I'll overcompensate and procrastinate. 
Um, but both of these lead us to believe that the success at the end wasn't really due to our talent, but it was due to luck or hard work, right? It, it's kind of fucked up. Like if we overwork ourselves and overcompensate and we, we achieve the thing that we've been wanting to achieve, then we'll say, oh, it's because of hard work. Um, or if we procrastinate, leave things to the last minute and then get it done, we're going to be like, oh, I just got lucky versus yeah, my natural innate gifts got me here. It's because of my talent that I am here. And even when, and, and this is the, this is something that I feel all of you will be able to relate to is, is if you deal with imposter syndrome, even when you re receive positive feedback, like even when someone tells you, wow, that was fucking amazing. You killed it on stage today, or you killed it at your event. You're not going to fully receive it. Because there's that part of you within that's like, oh, but I'm a fraud. So really the key to battling imposter syndrome is really going within. This isn't about trying to manipulate how you're seen or trying to um, shift people's perceptions of you into be so that they see you as an expert. It's not an external thing. This is about you getting to know you, be, uh, learning how to be confident in your gifts, learning how to be confident in who you are, learning how to stand tall as the person that you are, as the leader as the, that you are, as the entrepreneur that you are, so that you believe in yourself with a thousand percent conviction. Like you are a thousand percent convinced of your gifts. Like there's one thing that I can say for certain at this stage where I'm at after lots of fucking deep inner work, I can say I am a thousand percent convicted, convinced of my gifts. Like I am a fucking phenomenal coach. This is what I know for certain. And it's taken me years to finally get to this place, but I've, I'm here and it feels really fucking good to show up and, and be this confident in, in who I am and what I have to offer. And that's why when I show up from this place or when I share offers um, to, to go into one of my programs or to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, that I can do so from a place of sheer conviction because I know what I have to offer and I know the results that come from working with me. And that is how I've, I've started to um, battle the imposter syndrome in me. Now, there are still other areas in my business where I feel that, aka this podcast, like I just shared with you, a thousand things run in my mind every time I'm recording because there's a billion and one podcasts out there. And why would you listen to mine? I'm a fraud. Um, you know, and this is the shit that we as entrepreneurs get to play with. You know, like we get to play with this. We get to use this. Um, imposter syndrome as an opportunity to dive deeper into who we are and to become stronger because of it. What you have to remember is that everyone starts somewhere. Like we're all out here looking at everyone's highlight reel on social media. Okay. And you know this because you're also showing your highlight reels. Like we're all looking at each other's highlight reels. And this can lead us to. Um, comparison, which can lead us to feeling less confident about who we are and our gifts, which then bleeds into imposter syndrome. And what I'm here to say is everyone starts somewhere. Oprah wasn't built in a day. My first YouTube episodes were really fucking shitty. <laughs> Feel free to go back and listen to them. They're, they're pretty bad. Um, but everyone starts somewhere. And so you need to do your best to bring this back to you, to dive deep, to learn how to stand confidently in your gifts, in what you're here to offer, in who you're here to be, and what you're here to do, because that is what's going to help you battle the imposter syndrome. And also like knock it off with the comparison. Stop scrolling so much. That, that shit is addictive and that is killing your fucking talent. So I'm going to give you three steps um, to really start overcoming imposter syndrome. And these are three things that have really worked well for me. So step number one 
is to surround yourself with people who believe in you and support you and then ask for and receive their support. Um, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you know that I've been on this journey of like asking for and receiving support and filtering through my friends list and like really just creating an intentional community around me. It's easy to have community and have tribe and have people around you, but to find the right people, like you want to support yourself with people who believe in you, people who see you, people who honor you in your gifts, people who respect you in your gifts, and people who can remind you of that in those moments when you forget. Because the more that you surround yourself with these people, people who actually see you, the more you're going to start to see yourself. When you surround yourself with the naysayers or the quiet naysayers for that matter, you know, the friends who are like friends, but they're not, they don't really support you because they don't want to share your shit and all that other stuff that is going to amplify that feeling of, of being an imposter. And it's going to um, chip away at your confidence be really intentional with who you surround yourself with. So surround yourself with people who believe in you and people who support you and and then ask for and receive their support. Step number two is to use intrinsic motivation to take action. Now intrinsic motivation is to do things that feel personally rewarding versus externally. So when you're going to write a post, for example, when you're gonna write a post, don't write the post Um, to get an external reward. Write the post because it's going to feel good to write it. Does that make sense? If you're going to do a live video, don't do it because you're looking to boost engagement for that day. Don't do it because you want to gain followers that day. Because if that doesn't happen, then you're going to chip away at your fucking confidence. So do the Facebook Live because you feel inspired because it's going to feel really fucking good to get that message out. And that's going to be rewarding within yourself. So use intrinsic motivation to take action. And then step number three is to take action. Just fucking do it anyways. So whether it's sharing a post, sharing a video, taking action on a goal, whatever it is, when you hear that inner critic inside you flare up, the best way to battle that is to just do the fucking thing anyways. Like do the thing that your inner critic is telling you not to do. Do the thing that that voice um, that is so scared within you, the voice that's scared of being seen as a fraud, do the thing that it doesn't want you to do. Because once you take action, you're going to nip that in the butt and realize that all of this was just fucking false. So when it comes to imposter syndrome, please know that you are not alone. This is a pattern that many of us carry. And there's a multitude of reasons that we carry this, Um, whether it's society, it's through our upbringing, it's through um, the lack of confidence. I mean, there's a multitude of reasons that we have this and it's totally doable to work through it. Like you have the power within you to battle imposter syndrome and do what you're here to fucking do. Don't let imposter syndrome get between you and your mission. Because this might be something that you battle for a long time. I've been battling it for a long time, but I refuse to let it get between me and what I'm here to do because what I'm here to do is so much more important than this feeling of being seen like a fraud. So know that you're not alone. Use those three steps and surround yourself with the right people. Use intrinsic motivation to take action and then take fucking action. Do the thing that you've been scared to do. That's it for today's edition of Thursday's Thought. If you dig this episode and the information that I shared, please drop a rating and a review on iTunes. And I'm going to say that again. Drop a rating and review on iTunes, please. If you are an avid listener and you have yet to do so, I would truly appreciate you dropping a rating and review on iTunes. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining me for another edition of of Thursday's Thought on Today's Thought Leader, where I'm challenging you to rise up, speak up, and create a movement. If you want to work with me, if you're ready to gain visibility, build a loyal following, and create impact while increasing your income, enroll for my advanced digital training at rubyfremont.com forward slash unleashed. 
And just know that the best part about this training is that you'll also gain access to monthly coaching and mentorship calls with me. This is something that many digital trainings don't do, but I choose to offer because I like to have touch points with my audience. So head to rubyfreeman.com forward slash unleashed and get enrolled now. And if you have any questions about today's episode or just want to say hi, please, please reach out to me on social media. My handle is at I am Ruby. Thank you again for joining me today and check back on Monday for a brand new episode of today's Thought Leader.